I'm Mr. Grinler. And I'm Mrs. Grinler. And, and this is Grinler's Creatures. And welcome back to another episode of Grindler's Creatures. But, for today's episode, well, we have this. We are trying a bioactive setup. And one of our first ever bioactive setups. But can you guess what will be inside this tank? Give you a couple seconds. And that is the polyrachis dives. Also known as the weaver ant or the black weaver ant. But before we look at these anymore, let's start the video off with how we set up this tank. So many of you may remember this tank from last year. It used to be home for many Monocentropus Balfouri, a home they once loved, until me and Charlotte decided it was time to rehouse them. Since then, it's been set out in the garden. I had a few tanks in mind for this species, but in the end, we picked this one. You might be asking why, and well that's mainly due to the sheer size of the enclosure the height and the width, along with the three floors make me think of many different setup ideas. This species of ant can be arboreal for a start, and all I could picture was wood going up the centre with access to all the shelves for the ants to hopefully pick that area to make their nest. Then you could have a plant or two on the shelves. My brain was filled with ideas. Now go easy on me guys as I may get this wrong. It's my first bioactive enclosure and I've tried to research what I've needed, but any pointers would be greatly appreciated down in the comments at the end. But hopefully with what I have in mind, this will be successful. So after a good old clean, it came out looking good, and I was excited to start this project. So to begin with, I wanted to create a drainage layer, something I can't say I've ever done for any of my tanks. Crazy when you think about it actually. But let's start with putting the hydro balls into the enclosure. We are doing this so that we have a proper drainage layer inside the tank for the water to go to. Now the sink's satisfying about watching these fall into the enclosure. Something not so satisfying though is the sandstorm it brought after. Allowing it to settle for a while, we was able to start putting the Wii control fabric in. One thing I kind of regret not doing already is doing the same for the shelves, but we learn and move. I must admit, we had to cut this down twice so that it would fit properly. Lesson learned, don't let me use the scissors and measure up.
and now it was time to start filling the tank up with the soil. Alright, so just don't diss the pink gloves here. I actually think Charlotte buys pink stuff for me now, just for like a laugh, just so I can wear it on, you know, video and that. I, I will get her back one day, but for now I'm repping the pink, pink tweezers, pink gloves, you know, everything's pink. Now that the soil's done, it's now time to put the plants in. Probably using the wrong plants, but you know, don't hate me, Manuel. <laughs> but it's still not finished just yet. So I added some bark. We added some dwarf white isopods, thanks to Gavin. We added plenty of spring towels, and I mean plenty. We even had many other little bugs added into the enclosure. So my biggest concern before putting the ant prevention liquid on was the humidity in the tank and the condensation. I did think putting the moss here was a bad idea, so we moved it down a layer and added some loose moss that I can allow to dry out just use as decor. 
So after a few days, it was time to add the prevention PTFE flu on stuff on. Well, I ordered two different kinds and I actually can't remember which one I used. But this is probably my biggest worry, ants escaping. I know when we have the lid on, it's sat flush and I could even use like, you know, like mesh for the ventilation. But this is something I need to keep an eye on and I need to keep my eye on it for the next couple of weeks ahead. So I felt like I applied this wrong, I can't lie. It's my first time. You know, I left a few gaps at the top. Probably should have used some tape as well for like a straight finish. But again, we learn and move. I did however try to redo it, allowing the top to be covered. So that darker piece of wood inside was my idea for the nest. It has gaps to go inside and it's hollow inside, but I felt like it could do with some, you know, more spots around this area. So we decided to change it up a bit. Now this is something I had pictured in mind. I just hope that they use the area provided and don't go towards the ground for their nest. Fingers crossed the plants do all right, but I've never been one for plants. But I can see this tank becoming my baby. The next part was checking on a daily basis the humidity while tending to the tank itself and finding that humidity was a bunch of trial and error, but we got there. Researching all of this, I got a bunch of different numbers, but it sounded like most agreed for a bioactive, it was around about 50 to 80% humidity. So now, back to the polyrachis dives, the weaver ant, or the black weaver ant. An ant species that interests me a lot, and that's mainly due to the fact that they weave. Well, not the workers specifically, but they use their larvae, brood, whatever you want to call it, to weave the nest. Now that's pretty cool, right? Just imagine they weave around that wooden area. Be a dream come true and a sight to behold. But that's not the only reason I like them. I think that they look absolutely stunning under light. And I must say, I've watched these for more than I'd like to admit.
So after all this prep, it was time to introduce them into their new home. So, uh, welcome to your new home, Ants.
So I won't give you much of an update, but so far it looks as if the ant prevention works, although I want to redo it and use the tape this time. When the ants left the tube, I actually went and had a little break. During this little break, they all basically disappeared out of the tube, and it was like, it must have been like an hour. I was only away for like an hour. And then I was like, oh god, like, you know, I can't see any. Did they get out? I'm panicking. You know, I'm looking all around, I'm looking in the enclosure, I can't see anything, and to be fair, what did I expect? Because, well, they're ants, they're tiny. And like, why didn't I just record it? You know, I should have had a break while recording it, but then again, I recorded it for hours before. So, the next day, I saw a couple workers. It made me feel a little bit better, but then I was thinking, you know, what if there's only a couple left in there? So, for a few days, we kept seeing them, we kept trying to follow them. And about a week later, we found the nest. And it's where I wanted them to go all along. Now, I'm absolutely over the moon, I can't lie. But that's all I'm sharing for now. We will 100% put an update video out for you guys. But I just want them to settle and establish. So you won't see these ants until next time. And I guess that wraps the video up here. So as always guys, thank you for watching. Sorry I haven't shown my face we're here for the ants today so if you could comment like and share that would be absolutely great don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon so you're notified of when we upload next don't forget down descriptions the link for our link tree it's got all our social medias on there be greatly appreciated if you go check that out but mr grinner's down here charlotte you know she ain't gonna say bye because she hates ants but welcome charlotte so i say bye on her behalf have a great one guys You'll deserve it. Peace.